Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. Now, this is the second time that I've introduced my guest this way. I always know who I'm having as a guest on Talk of the Desert, except this time I'm not real sure. But on the marquee, the name says Rich Little. Rich, welcome again to Talk of the Desert. <laughs> Rich Little, is he Who's, still alive? He's still alive. Wow. What do you know? I can't believe it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> well, you've been in town this uh, for a, a day for the Coachella Valley Repertory Theater, and you right. were interviewed by my friend Don Martin, right. and you did a wonderful job, and thank you for gracing our desert with your presence, but also you're, you're doing a book auto, uh, autograph signing. Yeah, tomorrow at yeah. the uh, Just, uh, what is it? Um, just Fabulous. Just, just Fabulous Bookstore. Just Fabulous Bookstore, and I gotta show you the book, and it's a wonderful. It's little by little, all I've, the people I've known and been, because you've been just about everybody. Well, a lot of people, you know, there is no Rich Little. <laughs> I mean, he's a whole bunch of people. Do you know that a um, doctor one time, a throat specialist, wanted to take a picture of my vocal cords? Really? To see if they were any different from anybody else's. Seeing I did and? all these impressions. And um, they just came out looking like everybody else's. I don't know whether he expected to see little people on the vocal cords or not, but um, uh, I've, got, I've got a picture at home framed of my vocal cords, and people look at it and go, what is that, a moonshot? What, what is that, you know? But uh, he did that, and um, th I, thought, I thought maybe he would find something different, but he didn't. <laughs> yeah, but you do, you, I, I love this line. When Rich Galil gets a cold, Everybody gets a That's cold, right? right? <laughs> well, Truman Capote gets the sniffles, you know. <laughs> but not everybody remembers Truman Capote. You know, one time, Melinda, I got to tell you, this is a funny story, I think. It's in my book. Um, I was at the White House with Reagan, and I got to know Ronald Reagan quite well, because I did perform a lot at the White House when he was president. He was a great audience and uh, loved humor. And one time he did impressions for me. He did? Yes. President did. Reagan did impressions yes, he for did. Rich Little. He did. Uh, one night after uh, some speaker spoke, and I happened to be in the audience, and we were talking after, and um, he was introducing me to people, and he said, you know, uh, Rich does a lot of uh, wonderful impressions, but I do a few too, you know. <laughs> And I went, really? Uh, I, I, I do Jimmy Stewart. And we said, oh, great, let's hear your Jimmy Stewart. Reagan said, well, it's, you know, it's, it's not a classic, but uh, it's hard to do it in front of Rich. But Jimmy Stewart, I And I kept thinking, well, <laughs> that's fair, but don't give up your day job. But, and then he did John Wayne. He, well, this is John Wayne, you know, wasn't bad, but he did Truman Capote for me. Did he? The President of the United States did Truman Capote, and it was so out of character for him, because there was the leader of our country going, my name is Truman Capote, and I'm just, you know, absolutely thrilled to be here, you know. And then he said to me, the only problem is, Rich, I, I don't know what to say as Truman Capote. I need a joke. And I said, I've got a joke you can use, Mr. President. Oh, no, Rich, I, I, I couldn't take one of your jokes. Oh, no, no, be my guest. Well, if you, if you insist. Now, he gets a Secret Service man and a piece of paper, and he writes the joke on his back, right? And he said, what is it? And I went, well, my name is Truman Capote. You know, a lot of people think that I wrote in cold blood, but 
that's not true. Actually, I wrote in ink. <laughs> and Reagan screamed at that, like it was the funniest <laughs> thing he ever heard. He said, wait till I write that down. I write in ink. And then he took the piece of paper, folded it, put it in his pocket, and then he said to me, I can't wait to try that out on Gorbachev. And I thought to myself, he's going to do his Truma Capote for Gorbachev? That I would pay money to see. You know? I don't know whether he ever did, but he put that piece of paper in his pocket. I love it. He loves That's humor. Wonderful. But here you are, Rich Little, doing President Reagan, doing Truman Capote. Do you realize yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that takes an ec extra special talent on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, his Truman wasn't bad as Jimmy Stewart, mm, yeah. you know. Yeah, okay. But uh, he, he had a wonderful sense of humor. I remember one time he said to me, he said, Rich, you know, I think you do me better than I do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who the real... Ronald Reagan is. As a matter of fact, you do me so well, I was thinking when I pass away, they should bury you. Uh, and when he did pass away, I thought about that. I didn't oh, go to really? the funeral. No, oh. no, 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 oh. no. But oh. I thought about that. That's a is funny that line, too actually. Funny? Oh, he really? just thought funny. He yeah, was. Well, he loved humor. He well, just loved humor. Absolutely. And being an actor, and he probably had a lot of humor in his life. Well, uh, Melinda, I don't know about actors the quite, quite the right word. He was a, a movie star. Yeah, movie star. One time he actually said to me at the White House, Rich, what's your favorite Ronald Reagan movie? And I went, oh my God. Uh, 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 no, I can't say bedtime for Bonzo. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I said to him, uh, let me think. My favorite Ronald Reagan movie, King's Row. Do you remember King's yes, Row with yes, Ann Sheridan yes. and Robert Cummings? Yes. And he loses his legs in the movie. He said, that's the movie where that quack doctor cut off my legs. And I said, yeah, that's the movie. He said, you know why they cut off my legs? I said, no, Mr. President, why? He said, I think the studio saw the rushes and saw how bad I was, and they were trying to get rid of me. Now that's funny. That's thinking like a comic, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I, I love that man. I really did. I have such great memories of him because I never felt when I was talking to him, I was talking to the President of the United States. I always felt I was talking to a lovable old grandfather that you could just, you know, reminisce with and talk about the past and movies and everything. He, um, he was a very down-to-earth person, and as I said, he had a wonderful sense of humor. Yes, absolutely. Well, now you did um, uh, Richard Nixon in front of Richard Nixon also. Yeah. Yeah, that was not one of my but, finer moments. Well, yeah, but it is interesting because I've heard the story before, but tell the audience what happened. Well, I was invited to a garden party at San Clemente early in my career. I was in my 20s, and uh, when I got there, I couldn't believe the stars that were there. You know, back in those days, the 60s, all of Hollywood was Republican. Not like today, they're all Democrats. But uh, anyway, I was delighted to be there. And, um, and as I said, all of Hollywood was there. Glenn Ford was there, and Glenn Campbell, and George Burns, Jack Benny, John Wayne. Oh my gosh, the celebrities. That's your, your whole act. It was my whole <laughs> act. First time I ever met my act. And um, anyway, uh, Debbie Reynolds, she was a rascal, but I loved her. She grabbed me and pulled me around the swimming pool and threw me at the back of Ronald, I mean, of uh, Richard Nixon and said, Mr. President, Rich is going to do you. <laughs> and Nixon turned around like, what, a, what does that mean? Do me? Shoot me? You know. Anyway, I went into my Ron, uh, my I keep Richard, saying, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon went through with Ronald Reagan. I went into my Richard Nixon, and I started to I don't know what I said, but as I'm talking as Nixon, he's looking at me like I'm from another planet, and he he didn't know I was doing him. And then he turned to his wife Pat, who was standing next to him, and he said, "Why is this young man speaking in a strange voice?" And um, I finished my routine, whatever it was, and uh, he just moved away and uh, didn't say thank you, didn't laugh, smile, or anything. I was absolutely bombed. 
and uh, everybody was sort of gagging themselves because nobody wanted to laugh <laughs> because right. he wasn't laughing. <laughs> and then George Burns came up to me and said, you know something, I was so embarrassed I ate a flower. <laughs> and John Wayne said, somebody get a rope, you know. But thank goodness my car w was parked out front facing north so I could get back to Canada. Since you are Canadian, yeah, uh, dual I thought, citizenship I thought I, now. I thought I was going to be um, kicked out of the country for bombing in front of Richard Nixon. What other presidents have you done in front of them? Oh, a lot of them. Uh, and most of them had a good sense of humor, except Nixon. He didn't, uh, of course, we know that. Um, I did Jimmy Carter in front of him one time. Jim, 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 Jimmy Carter. <laughs> hot damn. <laughs> and um, as a matter of fact, it was in Vegas, and I was invited to some party, uh, some uh, well-to-do person in Vegas, I can't remember who, and I was invited, and I was thrilled because Jimmy Carter was going to be there, and it was his birthday. And I was thrilled, and I went, and a lot of nice people there, and I shook hands and walked around and was introduced to Jimmy Carter. And then the owner of the place said to me, Rich, it's Jimmy Carter's birthday. Would you sing happy birthday to him in his voice? And I said, yeah, sure. Well, we got a microphone and, and, and uh, we want to say happy birthday to, to him. So if you could sing in his voice. So I got the microphone and I went, happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to me. And then I looked at Jimmy Carter and said, Now, wasn't that prettier than Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> <laughs> and I got a picture right at that second. Did and he's laughing like you wouldn't believe. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, as we go on to the break, Rich, um, what entertainer surprised you? Surprised me. The one that didn't pay me. Uh, Jack Benny, no. Um, surprise me. I'll tell you who it is, and this is going to surprise you. Anthony Newley. Loved Anthony Newley. So wh Anthony what's Newley the story? Anthony Newley mesmerized me. Really? I worked with him a couple of times at the Desert Inn in Vegas in the 70s, and he was a great composer and a great actor and uh, a great singer. You know, he had that Cockney voice. But I'm telling you, he just grabbed an audience like you wouldn't believe. He was so dramatic. And, you know, what kind of fool am I? You know, who never fell in love. I know that I'm the only one that I've been dreaming of. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, he knocked me out, Anthony. I used to stand, when he was on, I used to stand at the at the edge of the stage and just watch him every night. I was yeah. just knocked over by how good he was. I don't think he lived a, a long life, but no, he did not. what a talented yeah. man. Yeah. I, I thought he was great. Well, Rich, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about your book, Little by Little, uh, People I've Known and Been, and we're talking about the engagements that's coming up right for you in Las Vegas and at the uh, Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. Great. And so we'll be right back with Rich Little, I think. <laughs> you never know. You never know. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. And we're back with Rich Little, I think, not 100% positive, but we're going to talk about his book, Little by Little, The People I've Known and Been. You've met a lot of people and been a lot of people, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've been very lucky in my career to have worked with some of the greats. It's interesting, when I was a teenager growing up in Ottawa, Canada, I'm a Canadian, and I had my idols. I mean, all kids do. A lot of kids like sports figures, but I wasn't really into sports. But I did like movies, and I loved uh, 
comedians. And, you know, I had uh, people that I admired as a teenager. Well, I never dreamed that within about 12 years, I would be working and getting to know a lot of my idols. Yeah. That doesn't happen to many people. No, it does not. You know, and it was such a thrill for me to, there I am working with Lucille Ball and, and Judy Garland and, you know, Jackie Gleason and Jack Benny, George Burns, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, I mean. You're just name dropping, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. pinch yourself a lot saying, yeah, this is who I I'm did. with? Yeah, exactly. I did. You, tr yeah. you tried to be cool, you know, you didn't want to stand there with your mouth open. And, um, but a few times. I had to pull myself together, particularly on the Dean Martin roast. That was the most pressure I ever had. That and The Tonight Show. Those two things terrified me because everybody watched The Tonight Show, particularly, no joke. and the Dean Martin roast. And there I was, this young Canadian kid with all these giants around me, and I'm telling you, uh, if you didn't uh, sort of level yourself and just concentrate on what you're going to do, you could bomb terribly just because you are overwhelmed by all these people. You but know? every time I saw you on one of those roasts, you always rose to the occasion. You always flowed with whatever oh, the I humor was. I think so. But that's my personal opinion, Rich. But you were there. I wasn't there. I was just watching the shows. But why did you decide to write your book? It's an autobiography. Well, it's not an autobiography at all, although I do mention some of my childhood. Well, there's some very cute baby pictures in yeah, there. Yeah, there's some you? cute baby pictures. And, yes. uh, and you're still cute. And uh, I had two brothers, and we were hellraisers when we were kids, always fighting. And some funny things happened with my two brothers, but mostly it's about uh, the people I uh, have worked with, you know, the giants. Right. And what I would do, Melinda, was. Uh, if I was out with a famous person and something funny happened, or they said something funny, I would go home and write it down in a little diary I had. So, boy, was I glad I had that because then when I was writing the book, I could go back and really? and think, oh yeah, I've forgotten that story. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So this diary helped me a lot in writing the book. Fantastic. I don't think there's many entertainers that keep a diary of, of sayings or people. That it, that, it wasn't you know? a detailed no, diary. But something you could refer to to write the book. Yeah, yeah. So was it difficult for you to write this or did it was it a soul searching kind of thing or was it just a matter of It was of fact? difficult because what, what happens is, and I'm sure it happens to a lot of people who write books. Uh, you write the book and then uh, some time goes by and then you, you pick it up and read it again and you think, oh, I can make this better or, yeah. oh, I've got another story that I should put in there. And that's not quite true. And, uh, you know, and so you keep rewriting and you keep rewriting and adding things. And um, suddenly I realized, gosh, I got enough material here for a book. Yeah. But it took me about 10 years to write it. Really? Yeah. Well, but th you're kind of doing some soul searching while you're writing, rereading it and rewriting yeah. it, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've been so long in writing this book, I think the first draft was in crayon. <laughs> Um, you know. White color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, I've been very blessed, though, to have worked with uh, oh, no some giants. No you know, it's interesting, when you think back of the roasts, the Dean Martin roasts, and all those wonderful people that were on those roasts, I was looking at the uh, Frank Sinatra roast that we did, which was one of the best, and I have a picture of the whole cast, and I have it on my wall at home. And I'm looking at about 20 people that were on the roast. Guess what? There's only three people alive That's in that right. picture. Yeah. Don Rickles, yeah. Ruth Buzzy, and yeah. yours truly. Yeah. And everybody else is gone, and yeah. it's kind of sad. It is sad. It's very you sad. Know, but time marches on. Yeah. You know. Well, uh, uh, we'll find out where the book's available. I'm sure Amazon.com, on richlittle.com is uh, your website. And you got to check out richlittle.com, absolutely. I have to tell you though, one of the funniest things I have ever seen in my entire life was here at the McCallum Theater. And Carol Channing was on stage at the McCallum. I'm going, to, I'm going to see her tomorrow. Rich Little, I love Carol. Yeah, I do too. Rich Little comes on stage doing Carol Channing. So we have Carol Channing doing Carol Channing and Rich Little doing Carol Channing. I thought I was going to lose it. It was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, well, you know, Carol is one of those performers that people 
love. Oh, yes. I mean, forget about her talent. She's got great talent. But uh, there are certain people in show business that are just likable, you know? I mean, Johnny Carson was likable, and uh, Jimmy Stewart was, and Perry Como was, and Jimmy Durante, and uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, and Carol Channing is likable, and when you mention her, people react. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then of course she had that voice of hers. <laughs> you know, if 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 a diamond, if a diamond is a girl's best friend, and a dog is a man's best friend, what? Who do you think is the smarter sex? <laughs> and you have to get those eyes. No joke. Huge. No joke. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was still one of the funniest things. Um, and then this was funny that I did not know this, that when somebody's voice, uh, was, if somebody was ill, you'd go in and finish the voice for the yeah, movie or something I've done like a lot that. Of that. I've yeah. never, I never didn't know that until last night when I was doing the research on you. Yeah, I've done that uh, a number of times. I, I did two Pink Panther movies for David Niven. A Trail of the Pink Panther and Curse of the Pink Panther. David Niven had lost his voice completely mm. at the end of his life. He had Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh, and you really, when I went in to dub his voice, you, you couldn't understand what he was saying. He was just mumbling. Oh. And uh, it was kind of sad, but I, I was thrilled to be able to do that. And, um, and I, he, did, I did Peter Sellers for a few lines that uh, they needed for him. He had passed on by then. I've done Tony Curtis for a movie. And um, Stacy Keach. Really? <laughs> yeah, Stacy Keach. Mike Hammer. Do you remember yes, that course, series? Yes, of course, absolutely. I met Stacy well, one time. Well, he was obtained in London. I won't tell you why, but um, <laughs> they needed uh, some dubbing to release these Mike Hammers yeah. that were sitting in the can. And they phoned me, and I said, I don't know if I can do a Stacy Keach or not. Well, what I did was, I, I had his voice on a tape, and I would listen to one line of him speaking and then I would do a line then I'd listen to him again do a line listen to him again do a line but uh, today I couldn't do it for the life of me but oh. I did it little pieces at a yeah. time yeah. and I did Gene Kelly for a Christmas uh, special did one time really? and of course Gene Kelly you know had that that kind of a high voice when he talked like this you know it was it was like this and I did this this Christmas special as Gene Kelly because he had lost his voice and uh, the condition was that I did it and didn't tell anybody I did it. Well now I can because yeah. it's years later right, but um, if, if you look at it today uh, you really can't tell that he's not speaking. Interesting. Yeah. Now did you dance for him? <laughs> oh I couldn't do that. Oh no. No. Uh, people say to me Rich you should go on Dancing with the Stars Yeah. and I say to them there are limitations. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. I dance like Gerald Ford. Yeah. Well, <laughs> is that three left feet or it should be three right feet, right? Oh, I would be. Oh, I mean, remember Wayne Newton did it. Didn't help his career, did it? No. No, <laughs> now, okay. Now I need to know. Okay, we are in President Trump's uh, era now. Have, do you do President Trump? Well, it's a hard voice to do because there's two Trump voices. There's the one where he's at a rally where he's speaking out to a crowd. Mm -hmm. That's one voice. And then there's the more intimate one-on-one -on -one Trump, you know. We are going, we are going to build a wall. We're going to build a wall. Not a table, not a chair, not a, wind, <laughs> a wall. We're going to build a wall and Walmart is going to pay for the wall or Walgreens or Mark Wahlberg. They're all going to pay for this great wall. We're going to build it. We're going to do it. This wall. We're going to build it. He repeats himself. Do you yeah, know no, I know he does. He does repeat himself. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't use a teleprompter. So, uh, well, you can tell, actually. Sometimes he says things, you know, that he shouldn't be saying. But at least uh, he, I find him interesting. Well, and I, I like him because he's not a politician. That's right. He's a business person. And I'm willing to give him a try. Absolutely. Well, my dad always said that he thought the biggest business in the, in the world, in the country, is the United States of America. And he thought a business person should run the United States. Well, we've got it. So. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people uh, don't like him. Uh, okay, that's fine. 
But I don't like it when when movie stars and people start spouting off on on award shows. I, I I don't think it's appropriate. I really don't. I agree. Uh, now we only have a couple of minutes left. Let's talk about you've got an engagement coming up on March six oh, at yeah. the Reagan uh, uh, Library, the President yeah. Reagan uh, Library in uh, Simi Valley. Are you going to be a Reagan there? <laughs> I've got a lot of Reagan stories, I and um, uh, I'm going to tell them. And uh, uh, it should be a, a fun time. I, I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I was there when they broke ground for the Reagan Library. Did they, were you Do you were remember there? the four presidents were there? Yes. Well, I was there. I remember standing, looking at them, and I was with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh -huh. and he said. Rich, look at this, all these presidents standing here doing nothing like, to, like they're going to do it during the presidency. And I said, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But anyway, um, I was there and, uh, and I haven't been back since, so it's going to be... Oh, uh, really? You've not no, been back? No. Fantastic. Well, that'd be great on March 6th. Also, you have a regular gig in Las Vegas at the Tropicana. That's at the right. Laugh well, you, you were there one I've night. I've been there twice. Wow. If, well, you've got to see the show and at the Tropicana. Uh, Rich Little, and you've got video. You've got... Oh, it's just phenomenal. I mean, it talks well, about... Well, you know, as you, as you know, you've seen the show, is that I do the impression and then show me with the person. Right. So uh, that brings credibility, yeah, you know, absolutely. to what I'm doing, and then I show a lot of my art too because I do a lot of sketches. Yes, you do a lot of, and a lot of it is in the book. Thirty oh. sketches in the book. Little by little, people I've known and been, and this is by Rich Little and Rich. You are a fantastic guest, and I thank you for your precious time thank today. You, Miranda. Now, anything you wanted, the final word you want to say to the No, when I come audience? back and do your show 30 years from now, we yep. will, we'll finish this conversation. That's great. I love it. Yeah. I hope it's before then, uh, before I, 30 Tom years. Tom has an interview with me. It's only half done, but that was 40 <laughs> years ago. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank Rich Little. I, uh, Rich Little actually did show up. And uh, thank you for all of the entertainment for all of the years. Good to see you. Since I was a little girl. Wee little girl. Well, I, I was a little girl. I sure appreciate that. <laughs> let's, all right, let's move them out Thanks. of here, Pilgrim. <laughs> Thanks, John and Rich Little for all joining right, me. All right, Missy. <laughs> and thank you, audience, for joining Yo. me. <laughs> for more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web. <laughs>